Hi friends, it's Shari. Today I'm making a Little Mermaid themed platform pop-up card. I've made some fun Little Mermaid cards in the past, a reveal wheel that spun around and a magic iris. And the new platform pop-up was just asking for a really fun underwater scene. Now this is a very long video. I've got a lot of images, a lot of coloring, a lot of ink blending, but I hope you stick with me because it was really fun to create this and I hope you enjoy watching it come together. So as I said, I use a lot of stamps in this. I'm going to use Mermaid for you, obviously for the mermaids and the rock and the fish. I'm using You Are Sublime for the eel and some of the plants, the crab from Life is Good, the school of fish from the mermaid for you flip flop, the little camera from Ocean Shelfie, and some of the rocks, the little bottle from Perfectly Wicked, the fork or the dingo hopper from Party Animal, the scroll from Smart Cookie, and the octopus from Octopi My Heart to create an Ursula. So I'm going to combine the octopus with my mermaid. I've already stamped everything else out, but I wanted to show you how I created my Ursula by combining these two stamps. So first I'm going to put a post-it note down as a mask and place my stamp where I want it. So I'm masking off her tail and I'm just going to stamp her upper body. So I'm just lining this up exactly where I want it and I'll pick it up with Door of the Misty. So now I know when I stamp this down that I'm only going to get the portion that I want to keep. So of course I'm using Lanfon Jet Black ink because I'm going to color all my images with Copic markers. You can see I kind of lined that up right with the bottom of her top there. Now for the octopus, I'm going to go ahead and line it up where I can see my image. And I'm not going to connect these with the stamp itself. I'm going to connect them with my pin after the fact. So I'm just looking at where the tentacles come together in the skinniest part. And then I'm going to put my post-it note down here. Now I needed the corner. I don't want it straight across because it's going to mask off the tentacles. So rather than cutting it, I'm just using that corner of the post-it and it works very well. So I'll just pick that up with my misty door. Make sure that post-it note is nice and stuck down so I'm protecting the top half of my character here. And then I'll just stamp down the tentacles for the bottom. So when I pull that post-it note away, you're going to see that the two are not exactly connected. But I didn't want the body of the octopus where it flares back out to the head. I wanted it to go straight up and down. So I'm using my Copic Multiliner to just connect the two. So obviously when I cut this character out, I am going to have to fussy cut this one. I won't be able to use the die but it's still really fun to kind of change up your stamps in this way. And look how perfect she is. So now time to color all these images and I'm going to start out with Ursula using some blue violets for her skin. It's really good to look up the characters and use some photos on the internet as your go by if you're struggling with colors and that's exactly what I did with her. I knew that she kind of had a purple tone to her skin and she has kind of a cool gray purple tone to her hair. I noticed she had some blue eyeshadow, so that's what I'm adding there. And so for the hair, I'm doing the same thing. I'm using that pale blue violet, but I've also got some very pale, cool grays to add in there. She does have very white looking hair, but of course when we're coloring, we rarely ever leave anything stark white. So this is a good way to kind of give it that white look, but also a little bit of purple tone. And I'm also gonna go in with another blue violet and just kind of add some streaks to kind of make it look like hair. Now for her body and her tentacles, it's going to be a mixture of some really dark grays, but I'm also going to add some purple on the underside of those tentacles. So you can see I started with that really dark gray, I added a purple, and I've got a harsh line, but I'm going in with a darker purple and sort of blending it out. So this will just break up that really dark line between my light purple and my dark gray. And then I can go in and fill in her body with a lighter gray out to that dark. 
don't want it all to be stark black. I want it to look like it has some sort of shape and shading. And I also took my white gel pen and added some dots to the underside where that purple is just for the little tentacles and the suckers on the tentacle of an octopus. So now for my eels, for Flotsam and Jetsam, I'm using some green colors. I know they're pretty dark, but I wanted them to stand out against the background that I'm creating. I don't want them to be too terribly dark. So I'm just going to use a lighter green and then some shadow on the bottom. And then for that really dark green, I'm just going to use that for their fins on the top and the bottom. I'll also go in and just add a few little dots so there's some texture to their bodies. Now I'm moving on to Sebastian, my crab. I've got three shades of red. I'm starting with my darkest, adding in my shadows. Then I'll work up with my middle tone, kind of blend that out a little bit. And then I'll go in with my lightest right on the top of his head and the top edge of his claws. Now for my little fish, this is going to look like flounder. So he's bright blue and yellow and I have colored him before and I actually went back and looked at the card that I had colored before just to kind of remind myself of how I colored him. So I've put yellow on his face. I'm going to add the little blue stripes and then I'll just fill in with yellow between those blue stripes. And then I've got a slightly darker yellow just to kind of brighten that up a little bit. He is a very brightly colored fish. Now moving on to Ariel, of course, that red hair. I'm using the same reds that I used for the crab. Starting with some dark around the hairline, around her face, where the shadows might be. And pulling that out with my mid-tone. I'm using some purples for her top and then I'm going to go in with some really bright greens for her tail. These aren't greens I tend to use very often but these are perfect for a mermaid tail I think. And then finally her face and her arms and her belly. So now onto some rocks. I'm going to color all these rocks with these same warm grays. I'm starting with my shadows first, just kind of going in where those ledges will be. Then I will go in with that W5, which is a little bit lighter, and sort of pull that out a little bit. And then finally, I'll use that W3 and just fill in the rest of it. Now there's a couple size rocks I've stamped out here from a couple different sets. I'm going to color all those in this same method. Now for that little camera, I'm using some cool grays. So I think it's fun to kind of mix up your grays. If you have cool and warm and neutral grays, you're gonna get some different tones. So even though you have a lot of gray items, they're not all going to look exactly the same. So you can see how this camera looks very different from the rock right beside it. Now for that little scroll from Smart Cookie. And I just went through my stamps and sort of picked things that would have fallen off the shipwrecks. Um, if you want more ideas on things that you could have underwater in Ariel's Grotto, there is the Magic Iris card that used a lot of stamps for the items that have fallen off the ships. And then for all my coral and my plants, I just went in with some really bright colors so that we have this really bright underwater scene that's going to stand out against that blue background that I plan on creating on my platform pop-up. So you can see I colored one orange, I'm coloring this one in teals. Those other two, I'm going to color one blue and one purple. I did not show all that in this video because we're already showing a lot of coloring as it is. But I do think it's fun, like on this one, to note that I colored some very dark shadows towards the bottom, kind of at the base of 
the ocean where the sand is, you get those dark shadows and those corals. Now for my little fish, I just went in with three different colors and kind of just made it up. I just <laughs> made them all different because I like the idea that they're not all exactly the same, but they're the same kind of tones. And I colored both school of fish that way. Now for the little bitty fish, I am going to color those in a different color. So I'm coloring those in orange so when I scatter them about, they kind of stand out. So now to move on to my platform pop-up, I have cut all the pieces from Distress White Heavy Stock cardstock. So I've cut two of the main pieces and then one of the add-on background piece. I'm going to be using Distress ink and my stencils to create my underwater scene. So I've taped off along that score line. This is going to keep the bottom of my platform pop-up box nice and clean and I'm also taping off the tab because I feel like adhesive sticks a lot better when there's not ink on the paper. So I've put this on to my media mat so I can use my magnets and I'm using the hillside stencils to create some underwater waves. I'm using three different colors of distress ink. This is just the regular distress ink. I'm using salvaged patina, blueprint sketch, and peacock feathers. So you can see I'm just kind of randomly putting these wavy edges, even though they're hillsides, and I'm just inking across the edge. These are going to overlap each other. You're going to see here I'm going to overlap one after I add a little bit more. I did want it to look nice and saturated, so this was just kind of working back and forth to get the look that I wanted. I don't want to see a lot of that white paper. So I'm adding more of that blueprint sketch to this layer, and then I'll do a third one. So you can see how these are going to overlap. I've kind of flipped the hill around a little bit to be a little bit different. And then I'm going in with that third blue, that Mermaid Lagoon, and you're going to get this cool look where they overlap. Then I can go in and kind of add in where I need to fill in the white. So I'm using that stencil as a mask now and I'm creating the sand along the bottom of the ocean bed using some tea dye ink. So this is going to completely fill the panel on the outside of the box. I'm also using some vintage photo. So I've got two shades of brown. And then I'm also going to add some splatter to this so we have that texture of the sand. So this is just some dark brown watercolor. You could also use some Distress ink. So now we have our sand. That watercolor that speckles that I put on there, that, those have dried. So now I'm using this as a mask in the other direction to protect my sand. And then I'm going to pull out the Bayou stencils and I'm going to make some seaweed. So I'm turning this upside down so it's coming up from the bottom. I'm going to start with this one first that looks like the vines. And I'm using Distress Oxide ink in Lucky Clover because the oxide is going to sit on top of that other ink because it has that pigment quality. So I'm just filling this in. So this is creating my seaweed coming up from the ocean floor. So once I pull that away, I can take that second stencil in the set, which has the little leaves, make sure I line it up. It does have little etching lines to help you line it up. I happen to have mine flipped the wrong way at first. <laughs> And I'm going to fill this in with the Lucky Clover Distress ink. So I use the oxide for the stems and I'm using the ink for the leaves because it's a little more translucent. And then also because I'm going to add the fairy dust paste over top. So this is going to give those leaves like a sparkly translucent green look. And everything I'm doing to this piece, I'm going to do to the other one as well so that the entire outside of my platform pop-up box looks the same. Now, I actually found that it was easier just to 
push this into the stencil with my finger. So that's what I ended up doing there in the end. So I'm pulling all my masks off and I'll set this aside to dry and I'll work on my other one. Now I did want to show you that I actually forgot to do the ink on the leaves on my second one. So you get a different look if you don't ink under the leaves. I'm going to make the one without the ink the back side of my box and keep the very green ones as the front side of my box. Now I've masked this off again to where I have just that piece with the little slot. So I've masked off the tab and along the score line where we're going to fold. And I'm making this the sand that is the platform part where all my pieces are going to sit. So I'm using the same colors I did when I was doing the outside. I'm using tea dye as my base and then I'm going to pull in some vintage photo for the edges. I'm also adding those dark brown watercolor splatters so it matches the sand that I made on the outside of the box. And then for this, because it's a much bigger space, I'm actually going to add in some white watercolor speckles as well. I think it's really fun to add in two layers of different color of speckles. It gives things a lot of depth. So again, I'm going to do the same thing on the second piece so that the platform area of both the pieces look like sand. Now I'm also going on on the inside of this because there is a little edge that you still see when the platform pop-up is popped up and I don't want it to look white. So I'm just adding some Mermaid Lagoon to the inside edge of both of those. Now I'm moving on to the add-on piece. So this is the background piece and I'm doing the same technique that I did on the outside of the box. Only this time, I'm not going to make sand on this one. This one's going to be completely blue, but I'm also going to add in the seaweed as well. So I'm using the same three colors of blue, using that same hillside stencil, and just working my way up and covering everything. Now I don't need to do a wave on the bottom. So once I'm done, I'm just gonna go in with that blueprint sketch which is nice and dark and just fill in the bottom. So you can kind of see there how it's a continuation of the outside of my box. And then of course I'm going to put that seaweed there too. Same stencil, same technique using the same inks. So this is that Lucky Clover Oxide ink. And then for the leaves I'll line those up and use the Lucky Clover regular Distress Ink for the leaves. And then of course I will add my Fairy Dust paste. And like I said before, I felt like I got pretty good coverage just using my fingers, so that's exactly what I'm doing here. So I'll just set that aside to dry. And once it's dry, I decided I wanted to add some white metallic speckles to this to add some more depth and texture to the ocean. So I'm adding that to my background piece and I'm also going to add those to my side pieces. Now one thing I'm not going to show you in this video because it's just a little redundant is I actually inked the back side of the add-on piece so that when you look at the back you have that ocean as well. So like I said there's a lot of inking on this card. I've got my little hillsides. I've cut three of these with that platform pop-up die and I'm inking these to look like sand with those same colors that I've used on the sand so far using some tea dye ink and some vintage photo along the top. You can see how it's a little bit darker there. Also adding in those dark brown watercolor speckles. And also I'm going to add some white watercolor speckles. So this will make it match the sand that I made for the top part of my platform pop-up, the part where everything is going to sit. Now I've cut out the little T's that come in the platform pop-up. I've got three of them. The middle one that's going to go in the middle does not have this little tab that I'm folding. And you usually cut that off. What happened 
on my card is I had a small piece of paper that just wasn't long enough for the tab, so it worked out perfectly. It was already shorter. So I'm folding the two that are going to go in the front and the back. You can see at the top up there, the one that goes in the middle, I put an M on it so I didn't forget that that was shorter. And then I'm folding along all the score lines. So I did not fold my score lines ahead of time. I thought that it would be better to just ink this on a very flat piece of paper and then fold later. And you can see how where I masked it, I masked it a little bit past that score line so that when this goes together, there's no chance of like a little white reveal. That part's going to be on the inside, so it doesn't really matter. You're not going to see it. So I've folded along the score lines on both pieces, and now I'm adding my double-sided adhesive to the little tabs where we're going to assemble everything. So it goes along that long tab on the end of the platform and then along the short tab that goes on the edge. I'm also putting some thin double-sided adhesive along the tops of all these T pieces that are going to go on the inside. For this particular one, I'm going to go ahead and build my little scenes on these T pieces before I put them in my box. I found personally that I had a hard time kind of gluing to this vertical surface that was all crammed in this box. So this is just what works for me. So I'm peeling off that liner and I'm putting those little hills on. All right, so now it's time to assemble my card and I have all the images that I colored, I cut them out. I did plan this out a little bit ahead of time and that was to help me know what images to color and cut out. So my Little Mermaid is going to sit on my rock here. This is going on the tab that is in the center of the box. So this is kind of my middle scene. I've thought of these as three different scenes and each of them is going to be justified to one side or the other of that tab. So for my mermaid on my rock, I'm just kind of putting all the pieces together and she's going to go on the left side of her tab. So I'm just checking how far over she can go because she can go over a little bit further than the hill is because the center of the box is a little bit wider. Now for the tab in the front, I've got Sebastian and Flounder. The little scene I'm creating on this one is going to go to the right. So the way I like to think about this box is three little scenes, but you're going to alternate which side they go on. And that way nothing is right smack behind something else. You kind of have a variety and it moves throughout the scene from front to back. So you can see how that is going to go to the right side and not cover up my mermaid. Now for Flounder and the fish, I've got a little piece of acetate here and I'm using some glue dots to adhere him to the acetate. And this way he will look like he is swimming. So I'm just figuring out about how tall I want him. And I'm also going to add a glue dot to the back of my little tab here. And then I can place him floating above Sebastian and the seaweed. And I'll just cut off the excess. Now I'm doing the same thing for my sea witch for Ursula on the back. I put a big glue dot on the back of her and I have a piece of acetate again. And she's going to be attached to the backmost panel on the right side. So it's really great to think about these layers as kind of varying things left to right and varying things in height so that you see everything on all three layers as you look through this scene that you're creating in this box. So even though I'm about to glue this piece of coral where it's sort of gonna be hidden behind my mermaid on the rock, I also don't want this layer to look empty and naked. <laughs> so it's good to fill in with these little items. It also gives you're seeing a whole lot of depth. So you can see now how all these are gonna to stack together. And I'm also going to decorate this background piece. Now I wanted my fish to go across the fold. So I'm just folding my image and then I'll fit that folded piece right into the fold of the background. 
And this is just a fun way to kind of fill in the space a little bit more so that they're not confined to one panel or another. And I'm using liquid glue to stick these down, especially because I'm going over top of where some of that glitter paste is. So there's a lot of texture there and that liquid glue is going to stick a lot better. Now for those tiny little fish that I don't think you saw me color earlier, but I did say I was going to make them orange. I put them just kind of sprinkled around to fill in a little bit more and give some pops of color onto that background. So I've just got three of these little fish and then actually you'll see at the end I made a fourth one to go on the front of my box. I just had an empty space that needed to be filled and these little fish are a perfect way to do that. Now I've put some double sided adhesive on the tab that I folded earlier. I'm going to slide that into the slot and I'm going to lay this down flat so that my adhesive sticks to the bottom of my box. Now you could build your box first and do that. I just feel like this makes sure that things are gonna lay flat. So since I have this in my first one, I can peel off the liner paper from the adhesive that I put on that tab and I can just lay it down flat and glue that tab to the inside of the box. And you can see how this pops up and I have my little scene. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the back side of the box. I'm actually gonna put this tab down first. So I'm doing it differently on this one. This is so I can kind of see, because this is the back, so it's a little bit different. Pulling off the liner paper from the tab of my T piece. And then I'm just gonna tuck that in so it's lined up flat against the platform. And then I'll just stick that down and now this piece is ready to go. I'm going to put my two pieces together before I put my middle tab in. So I'm going to line it up on my grid mat, make sure it's nice and straight and glue these two tabs together. Or I should say this one tab to the other. I'll do the other tab to complete the box here in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and add this center T. Now it just gets glued to this big flat rectangle in the middle and both of those flat rectangles are going to get glued to each other. So I'll just use a little bit of double sided adhesive on the T part. Make sure it's nice and stuck down. And then you're just going to line up the bottom of the top part of the T with the score line, with the fold just as if there was a slot there that's not actually there. So you can see how that folds together. Now before I completely close it, I wanna put some adhesive all over this rectangle so it will hold the two sides together really well. So I've got adhesive all over that rectangle and then I'm also pulling it off my other tab. And then I can just fold this close and line up those two platform pieces, fold over the tab and make sure that is completing the box and there is that platform and it is so adorable but I'm not done yet I gotta add the background and I have some more things to add to the box itself here's where you can see that I actually inked the back side of the background I did not do the stencil I felt like that was a bit too much not necessary but I did ink it so it wasn't bright white or worse dirty from your ink <laughs> and I'm using that thin double-sided adhesive that's the perfect thickness to fit inside this little lip that's created by the box where this background piece goes so it's just sticking to that scallop piece and I'm just going to burnish it down to make sure it's stuck down really well and then now for all my little shipwreck pieces, I'm gonna use those to decorate the front side of my box. So I've got the camera, I've got the scroll of paper, and of course the bottle. And I was gonna put the fork down there, but I decided to put it somewhere else because it was so small compared to these other things. <laughs> I'm adding my two eels. They're gonna go off the side and I'm actually going to fold their tails around so that they sort of wrap the edge of the box, which I thought was a really fun idea. So it just kind of continues on around the box. 
You could even add more things to the back of the box if you wanted. I did not go that far on this one. And since I moved my eel around so many times, I'm adding a little bit more glue. Because again, this is over top of that paste. So you want to make sure that liquid glue sticks down really well on top of that paste because it has that dimension to it. And then this is where I'm going to fold their tails around that fold and I'll just add some glue to the back of their tails and glue it to the back side. And then finally I'm adding the little dingle hopper fork to her hand. I just thought the size of it worked a lot better in her hand than on the front of the box. And then this is my finished platform pop-up. You can see it will lay flat. I can mail it and then it pops up to have this really fun little mermaid scene. I know that this was a lot of work, a lot of coloring and inking. I hope you stuck with me through this video because this card was so much fun to make and I do have more ideas I can't wait to share soon. I added that one little orange fish to the front to kind of fill in a little bit more, but otherwise I didn't make any changes. I love how this card turned out. I can't wait to send it to my friend Jen who says that this has to come live with her. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.